thank you sir it's an honor to be introduced by you sir and thank you very much uh, thank you prabhaka sir for giving me this opportunity uh, for speaking here sir all right Uh, so my topic uh, is the mortuary practices at the Harappan sites with uh, special reference to Northwest region of India. Um, so uh, basically mortuary practice is a study of uh, how burials have been uh, uh, practiced in various sites. Um, because most of the time we see that the uh, burials are laid in a certain way or the burial grounds have been prepared in a certain way or certain objects have been offered uh, for those burials so sometimes no object has been offered uh, on in certain burials so uh, there may be certain possibilities like uh, uh, there was some uh, rituals pre-inscribed rituals which may have been followed in those times or certain social structure which may have led the people the habitants of those specific places to have uh, followed uh, the burial practices in a certain way so mortuary practices uh, can be a, more of a cognitive procedure uh, which may have been followed under certain uh, norms or preset norms so uh, so as to define the social structure. So basically out of this study, I, I have tried to understand um, uh, what kind of practices were being followed through which the society could, can be understood through the practice of these burials. Um, so here uh, mostly um, the because we have uh, the inhabitants have been burying their dead, so uh, various methods have been seen, like uh, we have listened from the earlier presentations also of uh, Rajas sir also that uh, there have been certain ways of uh, burying the dead. So now uh, various, uh, in certain sites, there has been rectangular uh, burials which have been cut and then they have been uh, um, uh, prepared uh, with uh, uh, clay lining or maybe with brick masonry or in certain um, times we see a practice of uh, tumulus kind of activities that has been seen from the site of Dholavira. So there have been various um, types and subtypes of these uh, uh, burial uh, activities, uh, but then the habitation sites are much larger in context with these burial uh, sites. So possibly uh, because uh, so this may prove that uh, since there has been a larger demography in the habitation site, but that is not a proper representation of the entire population of these Harappan sites. So uh, some other type of burials may also have been practiced. So that is a common understanding through this. Um, so um, this is a basic um, introduction to the Harappans, we need to see this. So basically, uh, these are the sites, these uh, uh, sites have been taken by me for uh, study here. So I have uh, taken the sites of Rakhigadi, Kalibangan, Farmana from the uh, Ghagarhaka plains, which are near to the um, sites of the um, of these uh, Punjabs and Balochistan areas, which have been very extensively studied. And uh, then they have, there are sites of um, Dholavira and Surkotada also from the Kutch area that I have uh, studied. So uh, basically, um, a lot of research has been done in this uh, in this area. And there are in most of these excavation reports, there are mentions of possible social uh, patterns that must have been followed in these uh, sites. So I have tried to study these patterns, which may uh, kind of indicate that the how the society was practicing the burials. So this is the research area. Um, so my objective has been basically to study uh, the use and reuse of a specific area for uh, uh, burying the dead and also the socio-economic life of the Harappans, if at all it, it is understandable from these uh, burial practices. And uh, like, so society is a very dynamic concept. So uh, of course, with the changing times, there has been some kind of change in these uh, practices also. So not only has the, ha have I studied the uh, burials in individual context of these sites, but also in uh, uh, com comparative study with the other sites also. So in, in a whole, as the, the community as a whole has been also studied in this uh, um, study. Uh, so these are the markers basically, which I have uh, taken for uh, studying this, um, uh, doing this research work. So uh, 15, in total 15 markers have been taken. So I will explain actually on the basis. So I have taken these 15 markers for all these seven sites that I have done and for each of the burials. Uh, so that is an extensive uh, uh, part of the research work. But what I have done is I have taken example of one of the sites just to uh, show how I have done this study. So this example is from this uh, burial number eight of Kalibangan. So here I have taken all these 15 markers that I have mentioned in this um, uh, slide. 
so here are the so th this is the uh, grape number 2 a uh, skeleton number 2 of burial number 8 this is the uh, this is of an adult male which is in uh, lying in an extended uh, position north south oriented facing east so this is the primary burial now the uh, body alignment it is uh, lying supine um, so the head is towards the, the skull is towards the north and the feet is towards the south so and it is the uh, body is placed in the center of the pit uh, it is slightly towards the east and the toes are touching the southern end of the pit. Uh, the length of the skeleton has been uh, given, which is in the in situ measurement of the uh, skeleton here. And then the uh, position of the skeleton within the symmetry is also studied for each of the sites. And then the uh, number of uh, pots and the num uh, placement of the pots has also been studied to understand if there was any specific pattern that was followed in uh, this site and also the other sites as well. And then uh, the mode of disposal has also been studied. So for this uh, burial specifically, so as it is seen, seen like the upper part of the uh, burial is broader than the lower part of the burial. And then the skeleton is uh, laying over some kind of deposit, which I have uh, mentioned here, that is the brownish cloudy clay. Um, and then there is also a mixture with the greenish yellow loamy soil, which is mixed with fine sand. Uh, but then here we can see that this, uh, in this case, the other pots are placed directly on the base of the um, uh, this burial box, but this uh, skeleton has been laid on the prepa prepared soil with the skull in a, at a lower elevation than the middle of the skeleton. So I have tried to understand whether uh, the, uh, this same pattern has been followed in the other burials or specifically in this site or in other uh, skeletal samples or the burial samples in this site also. Also, the position of hand and legs have been, have been studied. Like in this case, the legs are uh, placed straight and the left hand too. But the right hand is placed, uh, it's bent and placed on the right iliac bone. So uh, maybe this, uh, this would be an indicator if this the same thing was followed or in some other way. So these, which is why these uh, all of these uh, markers have been studied for each and every burial for all of these sites that I have taken here. So uh, for, firstly, for um, Kalibangan, so here are very basic uh, introduction for uh, the site of Kalimangan. So here also the symmetry is towards the outer end of the uh, habitation area as it is seen. And then there are uh, whatever uh, grave goods are also the potteries are also mostly uh, obviously mature Harappan uh, potteries are here. In the site of Rakhigadi also, um, there are three mounds basically which gives us the uh, skeletal samples, seven, one and uh, two. Uh, for Farmana also, the cemetery area is uh, quite far from the habitation uh, place in uh, Dhulavira also. So Dhulavira only uh, we get these uh, examples of, uh, uh, there are basically six type of um, uh, mortuary practices that have been, uh, burial examples actually have to, that have been practices, uh, practiced here. So apart from the hemispherical uh, uh, thing, we have uh, the rectangular memorial burial and, or the cyst or the cairn type of burial. And then uh, there are this um, uh, composite graves, uh, etc. cetera. Uh, also in uh, the site of Dhulavira, just one example of uh, inhumation has also been found. Uh, in Lothal, we have this uh, example of joint burials out of all these uh, seven sites that I have studied. Uh, that was initially, it was thought that only Lothal has this example of joint burial, but from recent uh, excavations of Deccan College, one burial from uh, Rakhigadi has been found, which has been numbered as burial number 11A and B, which is, uh, which is also a joint burial present in the present context. Um, so from Surkotada, we have only found four pot burials. So um, no specific uh, study of uh, um, this uh, orientation or this could be, uh, or any particular mode of uh, uh, body alignment could be made out because all are pot burials. In uh, Ropad, most of these burials are very much disturbed by the PGW uh, layer, the later activities. But then uh, whatever skeletons have been excavated are mostly lying in a supine position. So all of these sites have been studied on the basis of these uh, markers. Um, so these are the uh, sites. Now, uh, on the basis of these markers, I have uh, prepared for, for each of these uh, sites, I have uh, made specific uh, um, uh, indications. So like for the location of the cemetery, we are usually seeing these cemeteries are located towards the, either the north or the northwest or western edge, edge of the mound. So uh, this can be called as a, an indicative marker or so because north, north, northwest and west is followed. But uh, also this is one of the one, uh, one understanding that always the cemetery areas are beyond the habitation boundaries. Um, then uh, in this one, the age criteria has been mentioned. So uh, most of these um, uh, burials that are found are, most of the burials are of adult. 
so here also uh, this is the male and the female variety so in ma maximum cases the male uh, burials have been found but in uh, rakhi gadi uh, as it is seen female burials are in majority out of the excavated uh, burials so type of burials mostly the extended varieties are found in rakhi gadi one example of flexed is found uh, so uh, mostly primary burials are um, excavated uh, found from the excavation sorry uh, orientation also most of the uh, orientation variety is north south um, and northwest so again this um, identification marker of them being aligned towards the north northwest or that var uh, variation comes out from uh, this study uh, facing towards also so there is a bit of mixed data in this so uh, mostly the burials uh, have been seen to be facing east west or is placed straight north like that majority of the uh, study is like that so from the uh, body alignment and the positioning of hand and legs has given certain ideas like for example in uh, the site of kalibangan so here uh, examples of uh, legs being crossed or sometimes the uh, phalanges start uh, this uh, uh, kept on each other or the phalanges pointed towards each other um, have been seen and in one of the burials that is uh, the burial number 34 in, in which we have seen that the uh, both the hands have been brought towards the chin so in the excavation report, it is mentioned like it must have been purposely placed there, but then no other um, similar type has been found from this uh, uh, particular site. Uh, in the in the site of Rakhigadi, so most of the burials from the RGR seven, the mound number seven, has been uh, seen to be lying in supine position with the hands and legs straight, but from uh, then from the RGR one, the hand are seen bent or folded, like it is seen in the sec uh, second one, the the one in the center. And this is one of that. Uh, this is one of the only example which is flex. This one from uh, RGR two. So in uh, Farmana, so from period two A. So there are three periods in Farmana uh, which have been uh, uh, found in the chronology. So period two A mostly the burials are laid, uh, laid in supine, supine position only. Uh, in period uh, in the uh, secondary burials, obviously the partial skeletal remains are most of the time found. So certain uh, varieties have been found that is from the uh, like the, this one the in the in the center that uh, it, it is seen which is from the period 2c the hands are found folded in between and from the uh, last photo that has been placed uh, that is uh, in that the legs are seen towards each other but then again there is no specific pattern which has been uh, seen from this site also only uh, certain uh, variations which i have mentioned here uh, in Dholavira, there are these monumental uh, funerary architecture, so there is no chance of finding any kind of body alignment, apart from that one uh, solitary inhumation, which is uh, oriented north-south and then it is facing west, So and it is in a highly eroded condition. Uh, so from uh, Lothal, most of the, um, uh, in the excavation report, it is mentioned that the um, burial remains are mostly of the robust individuals. And uh, in the three joint burials which have been uh, found, so these are uh, two of them have been identified for uh, the gender. So uh, two of the burials have two males in, in each, um, which have been buried. One of the burials, there is still um, uh, no, no confirmation over the uh, identity of the um, uh, age, uh, this uh, sex of the one of the um, skeletons that is buried. In Surkotada, all are pot burials. And in Roper, uh, so majority, I have already mentioned that the BGPW layer has uh, disturbed that. Uh, but in most of these burials, mostly the uh, yeah, skeletons are laid in the supine position itself and are almost complete or incomplete like that. So these are the um, uh, in, in situ length of the skeleton. So maximum and minimum values has, has been taken. So there is not much variation apart from the um, uh, in uh, uh, Rakhi Gadi, which is seen uh, in the case of uh, the... Um, uh, child variety so otherwise uh, mostly there is nothing no not much uh, differentiation that can be drawn uh, in the mode of disposal basically i have tried to understand um, uh, whether there is in what way the burial uh, pit has been prepared so in kalibangan it is usually seen that um, the burial pit is first laid down with the brownish cloudy clay and then is uh, greenish yellow loamy soil and like shunam and uh, upon this only when the uh, but yeah, the burial pit is prepared is uh, when the uh, burial ground is um, the burial is laid so they are uni uh, uniformly cut um, so there are certain variations which have been noticed are the burial number 4 9 10 and 27 which are broader to the north 
In case of burial 10, it is a circular at the north. In case of burial 31 and 34, they're extended types. And 30 is devoid of the, uh, is the type which is devoid of skeletal uh, variety that is a broader at the top and uh, than the bottom of the feet. Uh, in Rakhigadi, so um, uh, in uh, RGS 7 mostly, uh, the pits are prepared with uh, uh, gravel and are oval shaped um, and they are laid with the earth deposition and lime like substance. Okay, and uh, in uh, RGR 1, uh, it, it is mostly made of uh, brick masonry work. And uh, in uh, burial, uh, in the RGR Mount 2, um, it is um, a uh, there is a gra uh, the grave pits are uh, one among them is a dumped burial basically. Um, so uh, in Farmana, mostly the pits are devoid of clay lining, but then there are exceptions also in that. In Dhulavira, there are these different varieties of um, bur uh, burial. In Lothal also, uh, uh, the burial pits are first made, made prepared, and then the bodies were laid. Uh, so Kutada, again, the uh, pot burials, and in uh, Rupert. Uh, so uh, the lower level was first prepared before the uh, burial potteries were, uh, were laid, and then there was filled up, and then only the body was placed on top. So these are the examples of the sites where the uh, mud bricks have been found to be lying in these uh, uh, burial uh, pits. So number of um, burial goods has been uh, seen as such. So ma a majority of uh, pottery is in uh, Kalibangan and in Rakhigari, majority of antiquities in that. So these are the type of pots, mostly the mature Harap uh, Harappan type pots. Uh, but then um, uh, this uh, Amri ware and uh, Kodiji and Chanudaro type pots have been found from Surkotada, uh, from uh, Farmana also at times. Uh, placement of the pots are usually, uh, we have this perception of, uh, towards the uh, north of the skull or towards the northern part of the pit but in uh, certain times it is also seen like in this example in the in the middle one this one uh, so um, this burial is laid on the pots on a bed of pots um, sometimes uh, the skeleton is also the pottery is also laid on the abdomen region or towards the forearm uh, antiquities have also been uh, found um, and then there are certain examples of um, uh, pathology Marker. So the cumulative observations uh, that have been seen from this uh, entire study area is that. So uh, one thing that is to be mentioned is that uh, these are these observations are limited only to the burials, which are representing the Harappan population here, and they do not indicate the entire uh, uh, representation of the, of the entire population. Now, uh, since it is al almost seen that the cemeteries are mostly situated to the north northwest, which I have already um, speak, uh, spoken about earlier, and then there is the use and reuse of the specific uh, area as burial. Possibly, uh, it may have been a uh, uh, area which was preferred by the uh, the people of uh, staying in those habitation areas. Now, symmetries at Rakhigadi, Farmana, and Kalibangan have uh, displayed the presence of female burials, mostly adult, but Lothal has the prominence only um, specifically of male burials. Now, it is not that they must not have uh, buried females, but it may so have been that there may have been other mortuary customs for the females or the, the, the area of the burial may, may also expand upon further research. Now, various modes of disposal of the dead is found. So specifically, burial uh, may not have been the specific uh, way of disposal of the dead. Uh, about the pottery's I have spoken. And then uh, also, no particular... Uh, so these burials have shown, shown that the pathological, through the pathological traits also, that no special treatment is given or in the terms of burial goods or potteries for any kind of spe specific pathological um, trait that has been found in any of the skeletons. So uh, basically, it um, as as conclusion, it can be said that so the if the Harappans had tried to hold uh, uphold its uniform identity, now maintaining uniform identity for a very long period of time uh, may not be possible. Not only due to administrative weakening over a long period of time, but also due to uh, external influence, which may have um, played a factor in the changing mindset of the um, po population. So therefore, change as such is a very important factor. Being dynamic is also a very important factor. So, so maybe following this uniform identity may not have been a very um, a practical thing for uh, the entire population to have followed as such. And uh, there has no, not been any specific uh, marker as such for which may define that there were any specific pattern apart from the uh, fact of that the location of the burial or the, uh, the way the the distance from the apart from the location of the burial basically uh, nothing is 
uh, uh, pointing out towards any kind of specific uh, pattern which is which may describe the um, burials of these sites that have taken up a study here thank you